In this tutorial, we will be discussing alcohols, phenols, thiols, and ethers. Alcohol and phenols are the same as each other because of the fact that they both have OH groups. Thiols have SH, and ether has an oxygen between two carbon groups. We're going to focus on alcohols first. When we're naming these, name it as if it was a regular straight chain alkane. And what you're going to do is you're going to take off that E and put an OL there instead. So instead of methane, it's methanol. Here's ethane. Take off that E. Add OL there instead. So it's ethanol. These do sometimes have common names like methyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, which act as if this is a substituent. It's, I've seen them both used regularly, but I would say IUPAC is probably used more often with alcohols. So name it as if it's a regular straight chain. So if we're looking in here, I'm going to start counting from the right hand side because that's closest to the alcohol. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's hexane. Instead of writing that E on the end because it's an alcohol, I'm going to write OL. I have to tell people where that OH group is. It's on the second carbon, so I'm going to say 2-hexanol. Now there's another substituent here that I need to account for, and that's the methyl group. That's on the fifth carbon, so 5-methyl. 5-methyl-2-hexanol. Let's try another one. Once again, I'm going to count from the right because that's where the OH group is. 1, whoops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's 5, so that's pentane. I drop that E on the end, and I put OL there instead. So pentane becomes pentanol. That's on the second carbon. On the fourth carbon here, there's a methyl group. So 4-methyl, 2-pentanol. Here's a phenyl group. That, as I said, is considered phenyl. I don't have to tell people where that OH group is because when we talk about benzene rings, we don't have to refer it Phenols automatically, number one for that OH. Count in the direction that's closest to the next substituent, which would be to the top. And that gives us 3-bromo. Three 3-bromophenol. Three now, thiols are very similar to alcohols, whereas thiols have sulfur embedded in it rather than oxygen. They have very strong, icky smelling things that are associated with it. For instance, gunk is right here. Cheeses, onions, garlic. Uh, they actually add it to methane, uh, to methane so that way to natural gas so we can actually smell if there's a gas leak. The IEPAC way of naming thiols is just by simply adding thiol to the end of the word. So you name it as if it was a straight chain, and then put thiol at the end. Alcohols, you take off that E and put OL. You keep the E there for the thiols. So here, here's ethane. It has an SH, so I'm going to put thiol at the end. Here's butane. And on the second, but on the second carbon, there's an SH on it. That's what it's telling me. So here's some things that you might be familiar with as far as things that are smelly. Methane thiol is actually in oysters and cheeses. One propane thiol is actually in onions. And two propane, one thiol is garlic smell. Let's move to ethers now. Ether is an oxygen that's surrounded by carbons. It has a bent structure just like water and alcohols do. 
Most of them have common names that give alkyl groups the attached groups, followed by ether. So here's a methyl group on either side, CH3, CH3. So there's two methyls, so dimethyl ether. You name this as if it was a substituent coming off of the oxygen. That's why you end it in YL, because they're an alkyl group. If we look down here, three is propyl or propane, turning it into propyl. One carbon is methane, turning it into methyl. Alphabetically, methyl, propyl, ether. Always put it in alphabetical order when you're done. All right, so we're going to practice just writing some out. Pentanol, pent is five, so I need five carbons. Four, five. On the third carbon, there's an OH group. One, two, three. And then the rest of it is hydrogens. So hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. It would be much easier to draw this out in skeletal format, which I will do as soon as I get all the hydrogens written. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So there's one, two, three, four, five carbons there for pent. For pent. And on the third carbon, there's an OH group. And that's all you have to do. Sometimes it's easier at the beginning to just write out all the carbons so that way you can keep track of all the atoms. It's up to you though. F is two carbons and there's an OH group on it. Notice that they did not bother telling you which carbon because there's only two carbons here. Depending on the direction that you counted, it will always be on the first carbon. If I were to do this as a skeletal, it would look like this. Because there's a carbon here and a carbon here. Okay, finally, let's do an ether. Diethyl ether. So we have oxygen in the middle, and I need two carbons on either side, which is why it's F. Here's one side. Here's the other side. I can do CH3. CH2, CH2, CH3. If I did this in skeletal format, here's my oxygen. There's a carbon here and a carbon here. Here's a skeletal format. A carbon, carbon. You don't actually draw the dots that I've drawn. The actual final format would look like this. I'm just simply drawing the dots to help us count where the carbons are. All right. And those are alcohols, thiols, and ethers.